Hey guys, how's it going? James here from Car Audio, etc. Uh, in today's video, or in this video, I'm just going to be giving you guys a bit of a hands-on look and my take on the speakers that I'm going to be putting in my legacy, my project legacy, which I've been working on for a while now. It's about to have its sound system all installed, and so I wanted to give you guys a close-up look at the speakers that I'm doing to it, basically. So I'm going to, I've got the GoPro on the head strap mount at the moment. I'm going to chuck you up there and give you a bit of POV action. Okay. So I just finished filming the video for the Rockford Fosgate stuff. If you want to see that stuff up close, click the little link up here in the right hand corner. But Focal stuff now, let's get this out of the way. So you can see already what I've got. So these are the front speakers and back speakers that are going into the Legacy Focal PS165FX 6.5 inch component set for the front. Um, just the two ways, I would have liked to have done the three ways, but there's really nowhere to, you know, sort of separate out that third woofer anywhere. So I'm just doing the two ways, mounting in all their factory locations, and then the coaxial versions in the back. I really like these speakers, the flax construction, um, they sound amazing, I've installed quite a few of them into customers' cars, and I'm a huge fan. And also of the build quality of Focal stuff, just as a whole. So when you open up these boxes for the Focal PS165FX, I did already do an unboxing video of these a while back, but this I suppose is like an updated version, I know a bit more about them now, and I'm probably a bit better at filming things nowadays anyway. So open up the box, and we've got this little red tag thing here. At first I thought it was like something that had the serial number on it to provide some authenticity, but I've since sort of figured out that it's actually just there as a wee bit of, I don't know, it's just like a branding thing, it doesn't really mean anything, there's nothing important on it, it's just a you know, cute little red bit of plastic that says Focal on it. I've also got double sided taped to the cardboard here a, a bag with our manual, with our like manual for telling you how to mount the speakers and stuff, and a back sided sticker. These stickers are quite cool because you stick them on the inside of the window to be viewed from the outside, so that's something interesting that not everyone else does. And then, there we go, grills. I won't be using these because my speakers are going to be mounted in the factory locations, but that's what the grills look like anyway. Just uh, hexagonal metal pattern stuff. They're quite a nice feeling, they're like soft touch finished. And they just pop apart like this. The metal just pops out. And then you've got a foam ring for mounting the speaker on and a plastic base if you want to use these. But I won't be. So, so then we've got our two woofers, two crossovers, tweeters and a couple of mounting uh, tweeter mounting pots for different applications and then some hardware. Nothing else under the plastic, I won't bother getting that out. But let's uh, take a closer look a closer look at the woofers. So this is the so in the FX range, a couple of the big differences, people always ask me about the differences about the differences between the uh, FX and the F range components. One of the biggest things you notice with the FX is that they have these phase domes here in the middle and basically that just prevents, oh what's it called, I think it prevents beaming is what it's called where, where, the, where basically it prevents a standing wave being able to come off this speaker somehow, oh god I can't remember guys sorry, all I know is that there's a phase dome and I'm pretty sure it prevents beaming coming off the speaker, but anyway the speaker itself is absolutely amazing build quality this is why I'm all of a sudden or ever since I've seen them been a huge fan of Focal like cast basket not pressed heavy duty you can tell just by knocking it and feeling it and how heavy it is that it's uh, cast and really strong it's got this I don't know if the GoPro is going to pick it up but these sort of chrome rim ring bits are actually textured not just mirror and it's got made in France etched into that one and then I'm also not sure if the GoPro is going to pick it up but stamped into the rubber membrane here where the membrane meets the cone is the serial number, the model number of the speaker and the serial number for the speaker on the membrane. Something else I really like about these speakers is their terminals. There's nothing I hate more than trying to plug a crimp onto a speaker and like that crimp either just buckling or the little piece of board that it's sitting on just bending. These are thick pieces of steel I'm pretty sure by the look of it on like like mounted into a piece of that's ABS plastic which has been screwed to the metal I can see but 
they're thick. They can't buckle, they're not going to bend, so plugging the speaker wires on is going to be super easy. Because I like it when you've got like a really tight crimp, because it means there's a really good connection. But what that can mean with cheaper speakers is that rather than this crimp actually going on, it just bends the whole speaker, or bends the whole terminal. Fabian wires are a wee bit thin, I think, for what the speaker could have gotten away with. Like this speaker is quite a nice one, it handles 80 to 100 watts RMS and you probably could have gotten away with putting some thicker Fabian wires in there but I've heard heaps of power come out of these things in the past so I'm sure they're fine. Quite a nice big uh, chrome back on the back of it there. That's, that's hard metal, that's not a dust cover. So that's the woofer. They're really really nice and they sound amazing. This cone by the way guys is a polyglass, uh, actually there's a good picture of it just here, polyglass flax sandwich so the top layer is polyglass fibres and then underneath an actual mat of flax fibres, that's what you can actually see by looking up close so you can see the flax fibres in the cone and then another layer of polyglass under it and the reason they use flax is because flax fibres are cylindrical in shape under a microscope and cylinders are, a, a ge geometrically, a very strong uh, three-dimensional structure because they don't really have any weak points because they're so symmetrical they can they can like bend in any direction if they need to if they need to stress but they also can't bend you can't bend a straw like this because you can you can bend a straw that way or that way whatever way you want but you can't bend it that way because it simply won't allow because A will be pushing it itself into itself that way and stretching it here just won't allow it so what that means is that this cone essentially isn't going to bend no matter what and what that in turn means is you're going to get much cleaner audio because if your cone is cheap and made of paper or polyglass on its own or anything like that it's going to flex under the power that's being put onto it but if it can't flex the sound coming off it's going to be much more accurate to the sound that actually it goes into the speaker basically overall it means better sound quality so that's a really long-winded way of explaining it and that's why they use flax fibers a lot of people will say no man don't go for the flax go for the k2 series yes k2s are better speakers they do have kevlar in their cone rather than flax but straight up guys the kev the uh, k2 series are just like way out of my budget they're just so much more expensive the jump from these up to the kevlars is a lot and then the jump from the kevlar the k2 series up to the utopia range is tenfold so when you go up a range in Focal speakers you spend a whole lot more it's not like Pioneer or Alpine or something where you can spend like another couple hundred bucks or another 100 bucks to get some better speakers you have to spend potentially up to another five to thousand five hundred bucks to another thousand bucks just to go up a range so that's why I'm going for these ones uh, the crossovers let's have a look at them nice so we've got eight terminals along the front I'll explain that in a minute but basically the overall look of it, you can tell how big it is just by looking at my hands. They are reasonable size and so I know where I'm going to put these in the car already but generally a lot of cars you have to find a good place to put them. Uh, this whole material, all the black that you see is like nice soft touch sort of plastic rubberized stuff. It, it's Obviously you don't need that on a crossover but it's just really nice to sort of touch and feel and make, gives you confidence in the product. The fact that they're willing to put that sort of detail into something which doesn't really need to be aesthetically good looking since it often gets hidden so yeah I really like these crossovers uh, it says 12 to 18 dB octave crossover I guess it says that because it is adjustable I'll show you the switches inside of it in a minute on the front here we've got two inputs and two outputs tweeter negative woofer negative tweeter positive woofer positive inputs the reason and then obviously tweeter and woofer outputs on the right hand side but the reason they have two inputs is because they have made it so that you can actually buy amp these speakers so you can use two a channel for the tweeter out of an amplifier and a channel for the woofer and if you don't have the a processor in your car or something to set the crossovers accurately you can still use this passive crossover in line to do that work for you so basically it means you can put more power into each individual tweeter and woofer but still use the you know the passive crossover to protect them or protect the tweeter from doing bass and prevent the woofer from doing unnecessary treble the way they have it set up at the moment is that I don't know if you guys can see but there's these little u-bends uh, of metal going from the tweeter side to the woofer side on the negative and positives and the reason for that is because when you're not biamping it you want those to be linked but if you are biamping it you just simply take those u-metal bits out and put separate channels into them 
but I'll, uh, I'll open this up and show you what's on the inside of it, if I can find a screwdriver. Yep, there we go, got a screwdriver. Let's uh, have a look on the inside of this thing. It's only two screws. That cover just comes off, and then we've got, I think this even, yep, it completely comes off that base plate as well. So this is the whole crossover unit. We got, now they don't say really what they do, we got two switches in here, two levels of adjustability. This one says above it TW, so obviously that's for the tweeter. And then it's got zero, it's got zero and minus three dB. So you can turn your tweeter down by three decibels if you want to, ma like, if you want to manually permanently do that in your crossover, you can attenuate it by three decibels. And then it's got, for the mid, it's got flat and high. Now I'm pretty sure, I don't know if the manual says it, but I'm pretty sure what that does is it slightly alters the EQ curve coming out of the woofer. And I think having it set to high means that higher frequencies come out of the woofer than if you had it set to flat. So it basically brings the whole woofer's range up a wee bit. I'm pretty sure high is the default setting. Now I can't remember what I had it on, I'm going to have to check the other one. And here's these little U metal bits I was talking about before. So if I loosen off two of these terminals, if you are bi amping it, you just take this little bit of metal out and put separate speaker wires in each of those inputs. But if you're not by amping, this little piece bridges it out. Now I won't try and guess at what all this other stuff in the crossover does, but obviously we've got one, two, three, four, wait, we got three horizontal coils here, a couple of vertical coils, and then three big resistors. Generally, from experience, the resistors are to do with the uh, tweeter and the coils are to do with the woofer but I could definitely be wrong. Oh, actually my bad, sorry, these big things are capacitors. These two are coils, obviously the white things are resistors but these lying down cylinders are capacitors and it says up there in the top corner PS165FX. There's the model number for the actual crossover on its own down here, KIFI1079. Pretty sure that's what that is. QC Pass 2015. So yeah, that's the look at the inside of the crossover. I'll uh, quickly chuck it back together now. There we go, that's that back together. Put it in its nice protective little sleeping bag here. And fold that over there. Okay, that's the crossovers. Now let's have a look at one of the tweeters. So one thing I do love about these tweeters is the fact that they come with nice thick speaker wires coming off them, nicely soldered on, big thick solder joints. This is like 16 gauge speaker wire, which is really thick for a tweeter, but I like that. It, it displays confidence in power handling. So this little metal mesh grill thing does just pop off with a wee bit of wriggling. Oh, there we go. I'm still not 100% sure what this little dome in the middle does. At first I thought maybe it was a maximum excursion preventer. Some, I don't know, it could be either that or it could be to, to it could be magnetic to like hold the tweeter on there. Like, because if I just go like this, see it, it's like magnetic. So if that's a magnet, this is an aluminium magnesium dome, possibly it magnetizes together. I wonder if there's a way to tell. Have I got any other metal things? The knife is magnetic. No, it's not magnetic. I don't know what that little dome is there for. Anyway, yeah. Inverted dome magnesium, uh, not sorry, not beryllium. I can't afford that. Inverted dome magnesium aluminium tweeter. The reason for the inverted dome, I could ramble on about this for ages as well if I wanted, is structurally an inverted dome can be supported and pressured a lot more than a outward verted dome. Because if you push on the center of an out of a convex dome it can flex like a piece of paper but if you push at two points underneath an inverted dome flexing is much less as I understand it is the way it works so I'm pretty sure that's the reason for it so yeah that's the tweeter nice wee unit got a sticker on the back here with the model number nice little grill pops on like that pretty much wait I don't think I've got that lined up right yeah they just pops back on there and let's see if we can get this wire back in I can never get these back in once I've got them out okay cool got it in and they come with both a cup tweeter for like flush mount and this is the same material as those crossovers it's like nice soft touch rubberized black plastic so cup tweeter for flush mounting and also a a bullet tweeter as well for like proud mounting on a surface like that and then some mounting hardware in there the way the tweeter actually goes in here is it slots in and then in this bag there's a cool little w-shaped key there which you put on the tweeter and turn it and then the tweeter locks into place in the cup and then you put the little metal grill back on it quite cool wee mounting system 
And yeah, that in essence guys is the one the PS165FX kit. Totally unboxed and looked at. So I'll put this back on here. See if I can get it back together. Like that, close the lid. So yeah, that's my front speakers looked at. These speakers sound amazing. They've got the logo here for being made in France, handmade in France, and these speakers also won some awards, same ESA awards at like 2013, 2014, some years ago now, but still great speakers. And then the back ones essentially are the exact same thing construction wise. So I won't show you too much of these, but basically they're the coaxial version where the tweeter is mounted on a post in the center here, as opposed to being on a separate crossover. The back of them isn't the same. It's got like a black finish here with a little peel offable film if you want, um, rather than a chrome dome but essentially the exact same speaker. Membrane, made in France, inverted dome tweeter, flex cone, really nice construction, cast iron. I don't know what they're made of to be honest. Is it cast iron? I just know that they're heavy and they feel strong as fuck. The grills are underneath for these ones by the way. So yeah, I'm super excited to get these in. Power wise, I think these are all rated around about 80 watts RMS. That amplifier puts out 100 watts RMS per channel so they're definitely gonna have some nice power to them. Uh, let's have a look here. Okay, so these ones 70 watts RMS, 140 watts peak, and the components 80 watts RMS and 160 watts peak. Obviously, all four ohms uh, sensitivity. Is sensitivity written on them anywhere? Oh, on the back here, this might do it. 91.9 decibels on the coaxials and 92.2 decibels on the components. That's awesome, those are highly sensitive, wicked. So yeah, that's my Focal gear guys, it's gonna be going in the Project Legacy. If you want to see how all that sounds and how it goes, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can see it when it all goes in sometime. Hopefully in the next coming weeks, I'll get this done. So thanks for watching this video guys. I will put the links at the end of this video in the card for the unboxing of the Rockford Fosgate gear that I've got there and also the other video where I show you generally what the hell is all this car audio gear sitting in the corner here because there's a few more bits and bobs I wanted to show you and also updates for what I'm doing with the legacy. So those are at the end. Thanks for watching this video guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Choose to be happy and I'll catch you in my next video. Kaki Tiana. Thank you.